See that? Saxophone. I wore this garment a long time. This is a gift from a Nigerian friend of me when I was living in Cape Town. I think the last time, I think maybe the only time I wore this was when I did a commentary about uh, Henry Dumas. I, I think I, there, there's, this great, there's this great short story from Henry Dumas. In fact, I don't know what uh, Jordan Peele and them are doing with the Twilight, new Twilight Zone. I don't get TV or something like that. I have to catch it as a series or something, you know, some sort of DVD thing. Anyway, I don't know what they're doing, but people don't realize a lot of the stuff that Henry Dumas wrote, is, especially his short stories, is all it's really science fiction. I mean, really, science fiction. Say, check it out. But anyway, there's a story called I think I think it's called Will the Circle Be Unbroken? Anyway, it's about this jazz club. You know, it's just you know, and and then this this this. I used to be great to this day. This hipster, this hipster, white hipster wants to bring his black friends into this jazz club because he's hip. You know what I mean? And of course, remember Henry Dumas. You know, he he, he passed and uh, he he got shot in 1968 by a transit cop. Anyway, so this means he was writing in the early 60s, you see, late, late, influenced by the 50s, 60s, and that whole jazz scene, anyway. So it, it was just, anyway, so this guy's trying to get into the jazz club, this white guy, and so the bouncer won't let him in, and the owner, club owner, somebody has to come, or a manager, whatever, and they say, no, nah, well, you know, hey, you gotta go in at your own risk, because it's a special night, special guy's playing a special horn, blah, 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 blah the afro horn, I think it's called the afro horn. Anyway, so the guy goes into the club, I ain't gonna spoil it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Look up Henry Dumas, that's D-U-M-A-S, you like the French spelling, I always say Dumas, people say Dumas, Dumas, I think Eugene B. Redmond says Dumas all the time, I say Dumas because you know why I say Dumas, I'm going to tell you why I say Dumas, this is great. When uh, Henry, Henry's widow, widow is Loretta Dumas, okay, and I met Loretta during, during my, my college radio program called Variations in Blackness. I won't get into that, that's been documented someplace else. Anyway, so Loretta tells me the story, that so when, when they got married, when they went to get the marriage certificate, the, the clerk asked what his name was, and he said Henry Dumas. And it was the first time she heard him say, I guess when you introduce say my name is Henry, but you know, back then we just say first names, I guess, anyway, back, back then it's the 50s, whatever, I was 60s, they got married, and then, so, 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 so I've taken the call on Henry Dumas because that's, to me, that's what he said, just like I say Mangalisa Robert Sabukwe, because to me, Mangalisa Robert Sabukwe, when he, so, the first thing I read from him is the end, it says, you know, R, uh, it says uh, M, R, you know, S. So that was his initials. He wrote his initials like that. So that's what I call people by what they want to be called. See how that works? Hey, anyway, what am I talking about? Okay, so so, 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 so my Henry Dumas. Oh, let me stay on Henry Dumas. Oh, one I had this summer program I had. I was working with these the, these these kids. It was a theater program. And uh, so anyway, we, we, at the end of end of the year, end of the summer project, we was going to go up to this uh, campsite or some land that somebody owned upstate New York. This was we was in Jersey, in Somerville, New Jersey, but this was going to upstate New York. It's a whole program. Anyway, so they uh, 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 so I had to go up like a week earlier to just scope the place out. Da 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 da. da. Okay, so before before that even, uh, 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 I was working on a piece. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, got to sneeze to get rid of it over something. And, and so um, I was working on this project, and it was this. It was this. I was working on something, and I came across this poem from Henry Dumas. I had these funny words in it, and I asked the <coughs> Excuse me. I asked, you know, I, I had asked Loretta about this, she said, well, I don't know what it is, whatever. But she did say she said that she did at one time when they were living when it was uh, uh, in uh, in New Brunswick. Uh, they rented uh, a, a room out to uh, a Ugandan guy, you know. So anyway, so, so, so she told me that a while ago. And so the only Ugandan guy I had known in Somerville is this guy. It's a Ugandan guy, right? And so I hadn't seen him in a long time, so I was working on this project, and then I was going to do this ritual for Henry Dumas to bring him, to bring him over to his proper site, his, you know, because the way he died, there was no ritual done for him. I wanted to bring him over to his proper ancestors. Okay, so I get this whole thing, all these ingredients for this. I, I was working on, working on something. Then the, the day we had to leave, literally, we were ready to get in the car. I get a call, and it's the Ugandan guy. I said, yeah, I got to go up and um, to try to do this ritual for Henry Dumas. He, that's what, we was connected because he's a Henry Dumas fanatic, too. We both was into Henry Dumas. 
uh, and, and uh, in fact, he's the one that left the Henry Dumas books in the uh, in the Somerville Library, which I was shocked when I got there. I was, Henry Dumas books? How is this possible? He had donated to the library. Anyway, let me go to the point. So, so he, he, he I told him what the words was in the book. He says, "Oh, that's a ritual. That's a uh, that, that's a ritual for bring Brown Then he gave me all these instructions, you know, because I was going by my girlfriend at the time. So the other guy was a driving and whatever it is, and he said, you know, and the, and the, and the, and the, and the and if the woman has to wear something on the head if she has a period, if the, the guy has to something else, blah, blah, blah. I, I was going in naked because I would just had to put some puka shells on so I was going to this, this, this lake. I actually combined the whole story about the lake, which is my favorite Henry Dumas story, with this other thing, but it's confusing you right now, so forget what I just said. Anyway, so it gives me the final thing, just as when I'm leaving that, like, we go up to this, this, this area that's going to this, uh, this site for the, uh, the final project for this theater project we're doing. It's going to be an overnight stay or something like that. So I'm there, and uh, from the, what I realized, I'm laying in a, 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 a this, this is the day before, we were just in a canoe or something like that. I think I was just there by myself, or maybe I was just swimming, I was just laying on my back. Then we said, you know, here's my thing, the Indians really messed up. And when they get this land to whatever, you know, they really, 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 really messed up. So anyway, that's my thought. Anyway, to make a long story a little bit shorter, uh, the, the next night, I did the ritual because it had to be on a full moon, a bunch, bunch of other stuff. It was a full moon. I did the ritual. Uh, I won't go into it, but, uh, but, but I did it. And then a few weeks later, uh, I, went with Hen with, I went with Loretta to visit Henry's grave. And she said, Anthony, this is very strange. The last time I was here, the grave was mounded up, but now it's sunken in. All I'm saying. Now, why did I bring that up? Let's see what I'm drinking this morning. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's good. Uh, I came. I was going through some stuff, and I came across this. I had made a package, I guess. And you see, this is the from the Atlantic, the case for reparation by by, by Tanishi, Tanishi Coates. You know, uh, Tanishi Coates. This is that original document. Somehow, I guess I downloaded it, and I uh, I downloaded it and I put it into this this film here. Oh, because it has the pictures and everything. So if you haven't read this document, it's, just, it's, just, it's just easy to read, easy to read. But then I looked and I realized what I also had on this uh, this thing, see this document's like that, but then on the other side, I had put another document, um, and it's a speech. <coughs> Let me just read the, the, the little paragraph here. The following speech was given by Russell Means in July of 1980, right? Uh, before several thousand people who had assembled from all over the world for the Black Hills International Survival Gathering in the Black Hills of South Dakota. It is Russell Means' most famous speech. Now, I'll tell you how famous the speech is. This is, says in, in July of 1980. Well, Maybe as soon as August of 1980, um, I, I had a subscription to Mother Jones around this time. You know, whenever the Mother Jones first came out to about this time, I had a subscription to Mother Jones. Can I say something? The reason I had a subscription to Mother Jones, Mother Jones now is I don't know what what they are these days, age, but but back then I had I had uh, stopped my subscription. Why? Because one, it was the end, anyway. They showed a whole staff picture of Mother Jones staff. And the only black person they had in this whole staff was was a, a black woman, and you could tell she was a receptionist. So I immediately dropped my subscription to Mother Jones. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm getting over a cold. It seems or something a cold tried to get me, but you know, three days gone. It's going to be gone. So the name of the speech for America to live. Europe must die. And that was the cover of a Russell. I, I got the magazine. I still have that magazine. I got a, a copy of the magazine, something like that. Uh, it had Russell Means on the cover. And it said, and, but the cover, of, they had a debate with the Mother Jones people. And they didn't want to say, for America to live, Europe must die. They changed it for, to, for the world to live, Europe must die. That was the name of the of the article as it appeared in Mother Jones. 
and the reason why they had some sort of editorial meeting is about big mouth war, and I guess they basically said they didn't want to do the American thing. They had to change it because the essence is actually more Europe anyway. Anyway, the essence of this of his speech is this, it can, uh, the thesis or whatever it is. It's basically this. He says, I think he says there's five races in the world. Right away, he's off to a bad start because, you know, race is a false construct by the Europeans. Therefore, you're going off to European value of what that, 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 that. Actually, not even Europeans, American. Like I said, at the time, it wasn't America yet. It's like, yeah, the American prince, that the European banners that, that, that came to America, they're the ones that came with the race thing. America is the race thing. That's why we have to solve it in America. And we are. Okay. ADOS. Well, uh, okay. So the essence was this, the, 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 the five races, I think, was, was white, notice I put white first, right? White, black, red, brown, yellow. Those are the five races. And then he says, out of those races, the youngest of the race is the white race. See, that's why I actually put the white first, because it's the pink. There's the youngest out of the white, white is the, is the white race. And just like a youngster, they act like it. You know, they try to be, not to try to be bullies, but they got to get attention, da 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 kind of stuff. Well, he didn't say all that. I'm saying all that. And so, so what he's saying, if, if you want America to live, or if you want the world to live, then you basically got to stop this white, immature white race from doing what they're doing. They're very destructive. You know, they have no maturity. They have no, no culture, no, no nothing. So that's the, the problem. You got this renegade race running around here, you know, doing all kinds of things and just being devious, you know, being, uh, I want to say, yeah, demonic and, and devious and deceitful, you know. Demonic, devious, deceitful. <laughs> demonic, devious, deceitful. Say that. So those are the three things that, 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 that happens. That's how we, where we kept in subjugation. Anyway. So I just found it interesting that I, that, that I, that I should have all that. And I just, it's just a Sunday morning and I'm drinking. Wow, something real nice. I say, yeah, the American Indians messed up. Who's going to, who, right, who, out of all these, let's go back to the race thing. Out of all that, the only race, if you want to say it, and, and not even the race, but within the, I guess it's the race because it was made in America. The, the, the only, only ADOS can, for the world to live, ADOS must triumph. This is my speech. For the world to live, I gotta work on this speech now. ADOS must triumph. And I do mean the world. I'm serious. Because there's something seriously, if we keep on uh, 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 having these paradigms and, and these, these, these things that, that were created by this European mentality, you know, this European mentality, this, 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 this white, let's call it a white man because it's just a race thing. The white, this white male mentality, I'm not going to say male because women are really as bad. This white male mentality, if we continue with our white male mentality, now, even when they come with an, with, 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 with an answer, they say, oh, we will, we'll, cha we'll, cha we'll change ourselves. We can, we can, like the bankers, we can monitor ourselves. We can change the corporations. We can change Catholic church. We can change. We can monitor ourselves. Because the solutions they give us are still going to be within that, within that paradigm, within that little circle, within that, that, that zeitgeist that, that, they, that they invented. You know? So solutions are going to be within that. The solution to this whole situation cannot come from that white mentality. They say, well, what's the black mentality, ADOS mentality? Because you're still in there. You were, yeah, but see, we, we know what the deal is. I can't. There's this, there's this thing now where there, I saw uh, on, on the internet, there's this, this thing, I think it was uh, somebody, these two white guys, oh, 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 oh. I know it was my man, Mike, Mike Taibbi, this guy, other guy, Michael somebody. Anyway, there's this great YouTube, maybe I'll try to cut the thing. They're having this conversation, this hour-long whatever conversation about this whole Russiagate thing. But when I noticed, the way they talk, it's like they, they never saw it coming. And I'm going like, black people, well, this is the black people. I know, they say, hey, look at that. I put this one linked to T-Pain from uh, uh, Afro Synergy, you know what I mean? He told them a long time ago. So it's like black people, some Donald Trump is doing something. Black people, that's, they're not like, well, the black people that are conscious. The black people that follow this stuff, let's put it that way. They, we don't, we're not surprised. When this thing first, when 
Trump first got elected, I said, hey, you know, just leave, leave the boy alone, do what you need to do, double down, do what you need to do. But the most telling comment actually was the best one, and people keep on missing this. It's funny, I'm saying, Dave Chappelle said it best. He's online to vote. These people talk about Trump is going to do that. And he's, he's saying, these, these dumb people, you know, they don't understand. Trump is going to do more for me, a rich person, than for you. That's, that sums it up. That's his cast. That's his group. That's his loyalty. Look, Barack Obama got elected from so-called the downtrodden people. Let's just say the downtrodden people. And he did nothing for them. Uh, 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 Trump got elected for his old wily kind of things and playing the system, whatever have you. And when he got there, nobody was going for so. What he, he naturally goes to his own, you know, who got him elected. He got him elected. His his deviousness, his whatever. He got himself elected. So he's not beholden to anybody. So what does he convert to? He reverts to his own class consciousness, which is his rich people. So he's doing everything for his rich people. And then he's like, I have, I do the military. Get you know, on my side. Maybe I have some thugs on my side too. Because remember. Every successful, you know, whatever. Somebody said this. Who said this? I, said, I just saw this recently. Somebody said this. I got this. Well, somebody. Uh, uh, maybe it's James Small or a couple of, uh, oh, man. Yeah, uh, one of the Hidden Four doc documentaries. That's right. One, one, of the, one of the, the guy was saying, look, every culture that's ever come in, the, they're, they're, they're gangsters. Basically, their mob thing establishes them, and then they go from there to become legit from there. We, we never had a chance to have our, well, we, go, we have a whole different way. In fact, we have a whole different way that we, we come to this particular point of, of our, own, uh, 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 our own strength. We come to this particular point, but we come to a different than this whole, every other group that's come in and created their mafia, their criminals, and that. We, yeah, we have a criminal class, but we, we come to this totally different because we came out of the slavery experience, which is the child of slavery altered everything. If any... If all these cultures had to go through chattel slavery, they wouldn't have this, they, they couldn't have the same result. Any culture that came here, they didn't go through chattel slavery, they have a different result. Therefore, the answer to this problem has to be solved by people who went through chattel slavery. That's the thing. They're going to have to try to have these commissions where people that didn't go through chattel slavery, this is so academic in the subject or whatever have you, and they don't understand. You have to have somebody who in, is in their DNA to solve this, this panel they're going to have, this RE40 or whatever the hell it Whatever forties, whatever panel, the president, a presidential panel, all that stuff. No, we need a parallel panel, ADOS. And we say this is the thing. We don't care. You panel, have your panels and give them the money you need to give them. Fine, fine, fine. We're going to have our panel here with our scholars and, what, and, and, and with our sensibility, and then we will come up with our answers and we look against your answers, and logically we'll see who's who's best. That's just a little hey, scenario that I'm suggesting. That, that would be me, T, from the Patterson of taking the train to the bed, letting you know what I only suspect from an, an, a, a, a desk. This is the desk here. This is the, whole, this is the desk. Of the ADOS, that's American Descendants of Chattel Slavery.